Welcome to Cardboard Box. Today we're going to look at Kingdom Huffer. This toy represents the first time that Hasbro has released the Huffer character as a deluxe class toy. It only took 37 years, but this mini-bot looks all grown up. Uh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is! Just look at those big and beefy arms. Somebody's been working out. The Earthrise, Kingdom, and the Studio Series 86 lines have been releasing some very good and faithful representations of G1 Transformer characters. This Huffer is no exception. Even his truck mode looks more powerful. The truck mode doesn't have chrome exhaust, but it does sport metallic silver in all the right places. The windows are made from dark blue, translucent plastic, which I think is a nice touch. All previous Hasbro Huffers have had painted windows. At this point, it's pretty clear that this is a made-up fantasy truck mode. No real truck has fists hanging out the back. And no truck has giant exhaust pipes like that. Many people have complained that when the legs are properly pegged in to form the bed of the truck, it appears that the front and back bits are misaligned. They are not wrong. It looks off. The fix is easy, just don't peg it in all the way. The resulting connection is still very tight and looks half decent. The real problem with things not looking level is the grey trailer hitch on the truck bed. These pieces form the bottom of the feet. In the production art, these pieces are orange. Now that they are grey, it makes the bed look like it's optically angled. Let's see what it would look like if these pieces were orange. What do you think? Should these pieces have remained orange? Huffer comes with some accessories that store away in vehicle mode. The first is a heavy duty shield thing. It can peg onto the bed. The second is a futuristic sci-fi rifle that splits into two pieces. They tab into the sides and turn them into something that looks like a pickup truck. It's an interesting innovation. I'm not totally against it, but I do question the hollowish lattice work that's on display. Was this a legitimate design choice, or was it a plastic saving cost cutting measure? Does anyone think that diagonal design looks good? One could argue that this makes him a parts former, but not me. This is just creative weapon storage. Let's compare him to some other alt modes. Here he is next to Voyager sized Motor Master, Deluxe sized Ironhide, Legend sized Outback, Titans Return Fangry, Earthrise Optimus Prime, and Kingdom Optimus Prime. And yes, they are the same. G1 Huffer, Bakan Huffer, Power Core Combiners Huffer, Beast Hunters Huffer, Combiner Wars Huffer, Eye Gear Rager, a different Eye Gear Rager, X Transbots Crank, Bad Cube Huff, Magic Square Strongman, Mechanic Studio Engineer, Final Victory Reckless Combat. Kingdom Huffer comes with a ton of 5mm ports because attaching stuff is the main gimmick of the War for Cybertron trilogy. There's at least three, maybe four ports here that I didn't use. The most important accessory that can port onto Huffer is Prime's trailer. This is the most important cross compatible play element that they could have done and they nailed it. It's well known that the trailer is comically undersized for Prime, but let's be honest, Huffer wears it better. It's like it was made just for him. Now on to transformation. Rotate out the legs, flip around the feet bottoms, unfurl the hands, unpin the smokestack arms, hinge out the cab, flip down the torso, hinge back the wheels, I find this bit very clever, rotate the head, hinge, pin and rotate the arms into place, lock the torso back into place, and you're done. That's an awesome bot mode, and it was pretty easy to get him there. The instructions are not really good at describing the final position of his cab hood. It's on a double hinge that allows many possible positions, so you can adjust it as you see fit. The head can rotate 360 degrees, and it can nod a tiny, tiny bit. Shoulders can rotate 360 degrees, and hinge out like this. The elbows bend just shy of 90 degrees. There's bicep swivel. He can do this. The wrist can hinge inward, but there is no swivel. There is waist rotation. He can comfortably spread his legs this far. Technically, you can push it further into fuller splits, but at that point you're probably straining the plastic. He can comfortably rotate his thighs this much. He has a deep angle pivot. He can kick his leg forward this far. The bottom of his foot can fold out like this, not that you have much reason to do that. His leg can go back this far. He has a deep knee bend. There's good articulation all around. Let's give him the old spinorama. He looks darn good. 
His main bot mode shortcoming is the hollowness behind his lower legs. Hollow limbs is one of my main pet peeves with mainline transformers. Panel coverings are an easy solution to this problem. Some mainline toys get them, most don't. Some bots even seem designed with panel flaps in mind. However, they end up being axed somewhere in the design phase, probably due to production budget constraints. I would have preferred that Hopper's budget would have gone into panel coverings rather than accessories, but unfortunately Hasbro hasn't hired me as a consultant yet. You just know that third party or 3D printing folks are going to come along with a filler kit for this. Getting back to accessories, here's how he looks with his gun and his shield. Man, that shield is very intense looking. It sort of looks like it has steel claws built into it. As previously mentioned, this bot is covered in ports, any of which can be used to hold or store his accessories. Now for comparisons, here he is next to Combiner Wars Motormaster and Ironhide, Earthrise Optimus and Power of the Primes Outback, Reckless Combat and Huff, Crank and Engineer, Power Core Combiners Huffer and Bakan Huffer, Beast Hunters Huffer and Combiner Wars Huffer, Eye Gear Rager and another Eye Gear Rager, Magic Square Strongman and G1 Huffer, Fangry and Masterpiece Spike, and here he is next to Magic Square Stereo Master. You got the hub. You got the hub. Overall, I'm very satisfied with Kingdom Huffer. My beasts with him are very minor, and they are the same as I would have for any of the mainline Warper Cybertron figures. Those being the overabundance of 5mm ports, which break up clean surfaces, and the lack of panels to cover hollow areas. I guess I'm not really cut out to be a mainline collector. I have a couple of the Studio Series 86 figures and I'm generally very happy with their level of quality and finish. I can only imagine what a Studio Series Huffer would look like. Smooth, unblemished arms, silver hands that can hide away in truck mode, knees without unnecessary orange chunks sticking off the side, tires that fold away and disappear into completely finished lower legs. But that's just wishful thinking. I've sort of been spoiled by third party Huffers. Kingdom Huffer does deliver far more than what I thought Hasbro would ever give us. I can honestly say that this is the best official Huffer that's been made thus far. Yes, his front wheels don't quite roll right on hard surfaces and sometimes they might pop off their clips when you transform him into bot mode, but he is quite good. His transformation is fun and easy, he includes innovative parts storage, he scales a great with Prime's trailer, and if you're into the War for Cybertron play pattern gimmick, you won't be disappointed. He's a good little bot, and I think you'll enjoy him. Thanks for watching, Cardboard Bots. See you next time. Like my vids? Buy me a coffee. It's easy. Visit coffee.com slash cardboard bots.